Hello and welcome to Vodcast 16.4. In this podcast, we will consider the end stages of low mass and mid mass stars. This slide is all about the making of a white dwarf, and we're actually going to consider two different paths that bring us to the same end result. Let's start off by considering a low mass star that has half the mass of our sun. This star will start off like any other star. A nebula will contract and form a protostar, and eventually that protostar will become a main sequence star. Now, low mass stars will be red main sequence stars. On a Hertzsprung Russell diagram, you'll tend to find these stars towards the lower right corner. They'll have low surface temperatures and they'll be dim. There's something very important to note about the life cycle for low mass stars. These stars will not go through the red giant stage. And the reason is, the interiors of these stars will never attain sufficiently high temperatures and pressures to fuse helium. And because of that, the only energy source for these stars is hydrogen. So long story short, if they can't fuse helium into larger elements, they won't attain the heat pressure necessary to expand into a red giant. These stars will skip the bloated giant phase and collapse into hot, dense white dwarfs. Now by definition, a white dwarf is an object roughly the size of Earth that's comprised of degenerate matter. And just so you know what degenerate matter is, it's matter that takes up less space. You can almost imagine this as squishing atoms really, really close together. Now the white dwarfs formed by low mass stars will typically be smaller than planet Earth. But let's now shift our attention to intermediate mass stars, which are very similar to our sun in terms of size. Just like before, these stars will start as a nebula, that nebula will contract in heat to form a protostar, once nuclear fusion begins, we'll have a main sequence star, and the usual color for intermediate mass main sequence stars is yellow. Now, intermediate mass stars will form red giants. These stars are big enough and hot enough to fuse helium into heavier elements. So these stars are capable of bloating as heat pressure outward increases as those heavier elements are created. Now, there's a very important feature that comes up towards the end stages of an intermediate mass star's life cycle. As the red giant collapses into a white dwarf, it will begin to puff off its bloated outer layers. And as these stars cast off their outer atmosphere, they create expanding spherical clouds of gas. We call the gas clouds formed by red giants planetary nebula. And by definition, a planetary nebula is a shell of incandescent gas expanding from a star. These planetary nebula are very important because many of these elements cast off from the red giant's atmosphere are the very elements that go on to create new planets and possibly new forms of life. In fact, many of the atoms that make up you and I could probably trace their history back to a planetary nebula from billions and billions of years ago. I'd like to conclude this vodcast by going into a little bit more detail about white dwarfs. As previously described, a white dwarf is an object roughly the size of Earth that's comprised of degenerate matter. White dwarfs tend to be quite small, often no larger than planet Earth. But it's important to note that these stars are extremely dense. They might be Earth-sized, but they can be more massive than the Sun. So if you can imagine taking a spoonful of white dwarf dust, it would weigh several tons. That shows you how dense a white dwarf really is. A white dwarf will also tend to have a very hot surface. And if you look at a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, you'll probably notice that white dwarfs aren't very luminous. In fact, white dwarfs will tend to be found in the lower left center region of Hertzsprung-Russell diagrams. Now, I'd like to tell you that the white dwarf is the final stage in star death. But over a very, very, very long period of time, a white dwarf will cool and become a black dwarf. It's still a dwarf, but as it cooled over a very, very, very long time, its stellar brightness was reduced to essentially nothing. Okay, that concludes this video podcast. In our next podcast, we will consider the death of high-mass stars. And this is where things get a little bit weird.